Hello, and welcome to all beautiful souls out there. You're listening to the Restore My Soul podcast with Princess Millens, your favorite grief coach and emotional wellness specialist. In this space, we will help those who struggle with grief and loss and have real conversations about how to overcome it in every area of life. Through our personal stories, practical information, and wisdom from Princess and her special guests. We are here to educate, inspire, and empower you with the strategies you need in your emotional healing journey. We do not offer medical advice, but we believe that we can all learn to heal by creating a mindset to grow past our pain and push toward our purpose. Our goal is to remind you that grief is a journey and you do not have to walk it alone, no matter what the pain or loss is. You can be restored and live fully in your purpose. So let's push through the pain together as we share our stories of resilience one episode at a time. Well, hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Restore My Soul podcast. We are here to have real conversations about resilience and how to help you in your emotional wellness journey. I am your favorite grief and emotional wellness specialist, Princess Millens, and the host. And I am so excited about what we will share today in today's episode. Uh, I believe that if we are are well emotionally, that we can learn to be and become all that God has called us to be. So I'm so excited about our guest today. My special guest, guest today is near and dear to my heart. She is so very special to me, Reverend Rita Henderson, and she is an award-winning four-time Amazon best-selling author, international author. Let me uh, clear that up. She is an empowerment speaker. She is a self-publishing coach who helps five-fold ministers plant the seeds of confidence and harvest their self-faith and their and clarify their lives, mission, and their vision so that they can birth faith-based businesses that serve, scale, and succeed. And she is known as the spiritual midwife, if you've ever heard of her before, and has taught hundreds and hundreds of ministers uh, how to birth their purpose and monetize on their God-ordained talents and acquire skill sets by building successful faith-based businesses. So I'm so glad uh, that my special guest is here. I'm going to go ahead and bring her up. Reverend Rita is here with us. Thank you so much for being here. Girl, who is that woman? (laughs) That is you. And I just want to thank you so much for being here today. I know it's a lot of things that uh, you're going to bless the people with your story today. And we're just going to let God have his way today. How about that? Have way, Lord. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, just before we get started, I just want you to tell the people, uh, share some things about yourself and, uh, you know, how did you get on this road to being uh, who you are today? This this woman of God who has a lucrative uh, self-publishing business. And we know that everybody has a story, right? It's a it's a thing and it's some things that got us to where we are right now. So I want you to just introduce yourself and, you know, tell people uh, how you came to be. Well, let me say this. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. This is just an absolutely amazing. Ever since I, I, I logged in on here, logged in today. Um, and as you were introducing the woman who, who God has created me to be, my God, my God. I, I was just hearing in the Holy Spirit, like, we, we look good. We look good. We show up and we look good. We yeah. show up and we look good. We clean up really well, right? And because he has restored our souls because he's restored us and oh my goodness. And, and even, even while life is lifing, right, we still come and we show up and we look good. Um, And there's still some things that are going on. Right. And so God is faithful, faithful on today. And I'm just glad to be here. Princess, absolutely amazing to be connected to you. It's just, it's just um, almost so overwhelming in the spirit that every time like we almost encounter it almost it just takes my breath away 
It, it takes um, my breath. It does. It, it literally almost like I be yeah. gasping for air, right? Because it's almost physically overwhelming for me. Um, because it's amazing when you can connect with like-minded, equally yoked women, kingdompreneurs um, yes. in the body that have a story, that have a testimony, right? And and still show up, right? Despite everything that the devil threw at us. And so. And I'm just, I'm just glad to know you. I'm just glad to be here. And so I'm Reverend yeah. Rita Monique Henderson. I'm Reverend Rita Monique Henderson. I'm a speaker. I'm a self-publishing book coach. I am the CEO of Five Fold Publishing LLC. Um, and when you said lucrative, I'm like, oh, where the money at? But abundance is so much, and why the money is yet manifesting. Come on now. But there's so much abundance, so much abundance, and um. And he's faithful. So I do, I run, I'm the CEO of a very lucrative publishing company, Five Fold Publishing LLC. I'm also an award winning four time Amazon best selling international author. Outside yes. of the accolades, I am a faith filled woman on a divine assignment to provide Christian ministers and leaders with the self publishing strategies, guides, and resources that they need to turn their stories into influential income producing books that will impact the world bro. because your story can and will change lives and, and it's that thing it's that thing that you know that that trauma that's what i teach people how to print is how to identify the transformational message of their trauma because and now if you haven't been in any, in any trauma then i i doubt you'll be even watching this podcast right now absolutely right but, Right. So but to take that trauma, whether childhood trauma, adolescent trauma, um, domestic violence, whatever it is, and, and 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 after coming out of it, right, after he's restored us out of that thing, right, and we have some emotional intelligence around it. And you came in my life at a great time because Lord knows it's something that I prayed for. So when I met you as an emotional wellness specialist, I'm like, okay, yes. God, you hear me, you hear yes. me. And so um, taking all of that and then using that in a way in which to connect to the people that we're called to serve by writing and self-publishing your books is what I teach. And then um, how to build a platform using the, the, the trauma, the, the transformational, not the trauma, but the transformational message of yeah. the trauma. And so how I got here is just absolutely amazing. Right, because he's given us all the testimonies, revelations in the book of Revelations. It says that we are overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And so I have an amazing testimony. Um, yeah. yeah. Yes. So let's dive into that testimony. Tell everybody, you know, how you grew up, you know, maybe some things that you have had to uh, bounce back from. You know some things in our life so that they can be empowered to know that they can do it too yeah it's been it's it's a lot like what, what did the bible say we had ten thousand tongues i couldn't tell it all so i'm i'm, I'm even as i see her i'm seeking the holy spirit like where to start where to, where my story to share with them that's going to resonate with somebody um but on july 18 2011 let me start there july 18 2011 um as i was driving away from my good government job i heard the lord he said when you drive away from here today, daughter, he said, don't you ever drive back here again. He said, and I promise you, Rita, he said, if you take care of my business, he said, I promise you, I'll take care of all of your business. And wow. I worked 26 years. I was in a just over broke situation. Um, mm. I was bankruptcy. I was going through a divorce. I was in a bankruptcy. My home was being foreclosed. My cars were being repoed. One I relinquished, one got repo, one I relinquished. I told him to come and get it either way. Um, and, and, and in 2007, and, and the brink of what happened was in 2007, and in my 30s, well, I don't tell me, but in 2007, I woke up with a crook in my neck. And that crook in my neck wow. led into me going into paralysis from the neck down. And wow. Yeah, and and it took them like two months to me for me to figure for them to figure out what was wrong with me and for me to get into the right place and into the right people. But in the meantime, well, my body was shutting down, and I was going into paralysis from the neck down. And when I did get into the right um, office, doctor's office, um, I, I found out that um, they were telling me I would be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. Is what was happening, and that I had this spine. Uh, this uh 
spine, my spine was being um, severed. There was it, was, it was going flat and it was, it was getting ready to rupture. And wow. so, um, yeah, so I needed to have emergency surgery and all of the things. And um, it really caught me, I'm like, wow. And it caught me at a time, it, it, it was like, wow. You know, I was I was working well and I was even thinking about, you know, maybe even going for some promotions at the time. I was getting ready to get married. It, it happened like I think it was like 30 days before my wedding. And so, wow. it, <laughs> yeah. And so the doctor's like, I don't like surgery. I'm about to get married, you know, I'm about to get married. And um, he said, well, do you want to walk down the aisle or do you want to be pushed down the aisle? And I said, well, I want to be pushed down. I want to walk down the aisle, of course. And and so that um that led to six surgeries later i sit here six major surgeries wow. they've cut my throat open three times and um it's just been an amazing amazing journey though um it re it's required resilience it's required faith and um but god has been faithful he has been faithful and he has restored me um yeah yeah <laughs> And, and and healed me and, and it's just been absolutely amazing. Um yes. and let's talk about the, the the when that you had the surgeries and all of that, you know, the six surgery, the, the opening of your throat three times, you know. Um, and that's so powerful because a lot of times we discount the power of our voice. Yeah. Right. Oh, I had. And, and, it was a it seemed like it was an assignment against your voice right mm -hmm. and all the things that god has called you to so tell us a little bit about uh how you were able to bounce back and use the power of your voice and really be able to teach other people that mm -hmm. their voice uh through the printed uh books that you teach them to write or even the speaking part that their voice is powerful and, and that's the thing, like you said, the enemy was trying to rob me of my voice. For one, I was, I was just, I, I, you know, I was not necessarily shy, but I was for fear, for nervousness, for whatever reasons, I was afraid to open up my mouth. I didn't even like my own voice. I didn't even like the way that it sounded. Like it took, it took in 2013, I went to Megafest. It was, uh, it was the year that Dr. Cheryl Brady was there. And so I was having some issues anyway, my entire life, ever since undergrad, like where um, I was, you know, almost didn't graduate from undergrad because I didn't want to take oral communications because it required you to give speeches in front of the class. So I asked the professor, um, I asked him, at, it was just, it was really, really, really bad. Um, in undergrad, and I had asked the professor, I waited to take a, first of all, a class that I should have took probably in freshman, I believe it is, freshman year until the semester I graduated. Like, and I avoided it that much and I, and, and for a couple of reasons, um, but mainly because it was a part-time professor because the full-time professor at the university, she, she wasn't going to, like, I was, I was just so all afraid of it. And, and Joan, Dr. Joan Reimer was, she was, she was tough. And so yeah. I, you know, and I asked the professor, I said, you know, I pulled him aside. I said, you know, I'm, I'm afraid. I said, of speaking in public. I said, if you could just give me a D and I'm, I'm not gotten a D before. I think I got one once in um, my first year of college, but so I wasn't getting D's, but I'm like, and then I made that one up. It didn't stay, but I'm like, if you could just give me a D and let me graduate with my bachelor's degree, you know what I'm saying? Because I can't do it. And he said, well, you know, Rita, I'll let you do your speeches, you know, um, after class. And he did, wow. and he let me do them, and you know, yeah. And but that in the long run, that didn't do me any good. It didn't do me any good. But I appreciated it because I didn't get my bachelor's degree from Wayne State University, and uh, <laughs> and so um, I, I just had this thing about using my voice. And it was 2013 when um, I went to Megafest, and mm -hmm. Dr. Cheryl Brady was on the. You know, she was speaking at Megafest that year, and I was sitting there, and I remember sitting there in the arena. I think it was the Airlines, American Airlines Arena in in, in Dallas, Texas. And I'm sitting there and I'm watching Dr. Cheryl Brady. 
And God says to me, he said, and now y'all know Dr. Sherbrady. You know who Dr. Sherbrady is. And she, yes. now, kind of, it's like that year, Megafest, it was 50,000 people there. I think like 30,000, 25,000 women, 10,000 kids, 15,000 men. It was huge. And Dr. Sherbrady has this raspy voice. You yes. Know? It's very yes, be voice and, and thousands of people tens of thousands of people and she's up there and i'm sitting in the arena and i'm looking at her and god says now surely if i can use her voice surely if i can use your voice yes 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 mm. won't he show you god has a way of showing up right yeah yeah, and I'm just like, wow, you know, I was so enamored with her, and I was just like, wow, she was a dynamic, she's a dynamic speaker, you know. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and that's what he said to me. I was sitting there in the arena. And he said, now surely if I could use her voice, then surely I could use yours. And um, yeah. I've been pretty much opening up my mouth since, but it has yeah. not been easy. And so the devil will try to stop, yeah. you know, the voice. Right, yeah, um, because yeah. it's important. Because what power we know that Proverbs were three, five, and six says that life and death is in the power of the tongue, life and death mm -hmm. are in the power of the tongue. I think it goes, yes. and those that love it will, yeah, that, yes, 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 that is so powerful because a lot of times, uh, the enemy he will try to stop us in our tracks to make us feel like. We are less than that. Our voices don't matter. Uh, even to the point that, you know, I had the same struggle that I didn't like the sound of my voice either. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know, you know, um, there's this thing, right? We have to push through to make yeah. sure that we're doing what God has called us to do. Right. And you have been so instrumental in um, teaching hundreds of uh, ministers hundreds of fivefold ministers, the power of their voice in their self-publishing. And there's a lot of people that wouldn't never have published their book had it not been for, for a Reverend Rita Henderson, right? And fivefold publishing. So we, we had to make sure that he showed you that so that you would be able to push through and do exactly what you're doing right now. Um, I want you to, I want to, talk a little bit about uh, a couple of minutes about the business side of you, right? The business wow. side of you and maybe some things that you can share um, with people who might be struggling um, and they have to kind of buy some people, even during the pandemic, they lost their businesses, right? And some things that you can encourage with your story of how you are able to build your business. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Entrepreneurship is definitely um, it, it, it takes a building up of a muscle, right? For entrepreneurship, it was a struggle for me when I first came out in these internet streets. It was a struggle for me. Um, in 2016, I wasn't born and raised in the church. I got in the church like I like to say for real, for real, around 2011, right? And um, and so I think I'm a little bit more radical. <laughs> for church folk, I know I am. I don't think I know I am. I've been in the place, you know. I'm a little bit more radical. So when I first came out, you know, I had this this concept, as you know, I wanted to monetize ministry, you know, yes. and and I didn't know, but I I just knew that um I me being in the church in in the, in the short time that I was in the church, I knew that um well, one of the things um is <laughs> it's funny, but when I got in the church, I was I was a mess. I was just, I came straight out the bar stool. I did. I came straight out the bar stool into the church. And as um, many of us do. As and, many of us. And I'll tell you, it was, I, I didn't have anything. I didn't feel I had, like I had anything to offer God when he first, you know, when he called me. And I said, Lord, I don't have nothing. I, I can't stop drinking. I can't, I couldn't stop smoking. I couldn't stop cussing. I couldn't stop fornicating. Yeah. I, told him, I said, I, I don't I don't know how to stop doing these things. I said, but what I can do is I can give you my money. I can Come give on. you my money and that I will do. Yeah. 
had yeah, a good yeah. job. And I wasn't know, I didn't really know how to manage money no way. So I figured, hey, I put it in God's hand. They say, you know, there's a such thing as giving your way out. I mean, I didn't know it then, but I just knew that my heart was, I don't have nothing else but my money to give you. Yeah. You know, and I and, and it was my I, I made it my business to be the highest tithe payer. One of the I was the second highest tithe payer in my church. And when they wanted something, they needed chairs, they needed a new roof, they needed carpet. When you know they needed another hundred dollars, I was I made my I was that person because I couldn't give them anything else. I was so yeah. messed up, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I did, and I believe that there is, and I stood on Luke six thirty eight. After that, I stood on that script. Yeah given it should be given unto you and that came years later but when i first got i didn't know what to, it really know what to do and how to do it and i said I, you can have my money just whatever they need i got it you know yeah. and, and and what i got tired of seeing was the five-fold ministers struggling they like they were going to jobs they were in just over broke situations and mm -hmm. you know and me being in coming into the church later like this kingdom, right? This is where the prosperity is and the wealth, right? And I wasn't seeing it. And I wasn't seeing it in the black church, right? Yeah. And I wasn't seeing it with the five-fold ministers. I wasn't. And um, and the, oftentimes I would see them door dashing. And I think back then, I didn't know about door dashing, but they were definitely Ubering and driving cabs and stuff like that, right? And I was like, you know, there was something wrong with that. I, I think that there's still something wrong with that now. Like, um, yeah. And so yeah. God called me out. I, I didn't know. I knew that I wanted to um, to start a business, to, to serve the people. I just really didn't know how. I knew, you know, I wanted mm -hmm. to monetize ministry. That's what I knew. And I was getting a lot of side eyes. I was get, getting a lot of, you know, and I didn't have the self-confidence for it. I didn't. I didn't have the, the, the backbone for it. And so I sold the domain name. Um, yeah. I actually bought it for like a thousand dollars. I mean, it was a great concept, I think. Um, so about 18 months, I struggled. I didn't know really what to do, what was what was appropriate. Right. And so I was seeking the Holy Spirit in 18 months. And then God spoke to me and he said, if it's a gift, it's to be given. If it's mm. a gift, given and he spoke to me about the spiritual gifts and you know um and he said if it's a talent a skill then it yeah. can be it can be so it, 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 so and then he took me to the book of uh, matthew right and talk in the parable of the men with the talents and he began to speak that to me and i said okay i got it now now you don't talk to people to pray for them right but yeah. you could talk for a prayer journal i'm just saying yeah. I'm just, oh. that's what <laughs> out there that's thinking about how can I leverage, how can I create something that's going to generate me the multiple streams of income? Uh, how can I generate something or create something that's going to, you know what I'm saying, get me into my wealthy place, right? And um, and and and, <laughs> and if it's a gift, it's to be given. And that gave me so much clarity. This is the clarity yeah. that I needed to move forward. That's good. Right? That's and so that's I said, okay, Okay, and I knew my my skill set, my talents, you know, and 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 they were all aligned with self publishing, and I kind of fell into that, um, okay. and that was through self publishing my book. God had gave me such a testimony. He had yeah. that all of that debt that I was in in 2011 when I walked off that good government job, less than five years. Yes, yeah. but natural, super yeah. natural, cleared up. He, he, so I'm talking about 2011. I'm not talking about 2020. I'm talking about 2011, 2012, 13, 14. Supernaturally canceled student loans. Supernaturally canceled. You know, that, that, wow. foreclosure, that foreclosure that I that foreclosure. Oh, I was in over a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt. That foreclosure never appeared, never appeared on my credit report. My God. Never appeared on my those repo cards never appeared. Not one appeared on my credit report. Wow. He, that, the home that I that I left, he said to stop saying you losing it because it's all about the words that we speak. And so in yeah. that thing, and I'm going somewhere because I hear the Holy Spirit. Now in whatever it is that you're going through, you be careful of what you speak. 
Mm -hmm. And I used to say, I'm losing my home. I, I sat in the middle of my bed and I folded my legs up and then look, and I begin to say, and I begin to weep and I begin to say, Lord, I'm losing my home. He said, stop, stop speaking those things. He yes. said, you're not losing anything. He said, stop, reframe that. Yeah. Reframe your vocabulary. Start saying you leaving it. I'm leaving it. I ain't losing nothing. I'm leaving it. For better. Yeah. And the home that I'm sitting in now, I, I bought for $4,000. Four thousand dollars cash. I call it the little mini mansion. Four thousand dollars cash. <laughs> like a, a, a month, a couple of days. I got the deed of it, my my birthday one year. Like, and that's just that was just all of yeah. it. It's just been a faith yeah. walk, really a yeah. faith walk. And so I had this amazing testimony on how you know he had less than five years. My bills, you know, my bills was down to. And they're, they're still pretty low today, but they're still, they were down to um, about $374 a month. I'm talking wow. about homeowner's insurance, car, car insurance, um, yeah. life, gas, water. I had, wow. and so that first book I wrote from small coins to big bucks, yes. it, it talked about the five strategies that God gave me to overcome over a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt in, in, in just record. He just wow, wow. did it. That is me. such a powerful Without a job. job. Without a job. Yeah. Okay. And that's powerful. <laughs> that is wow. a powerful testimony. That when is a powerful it, if you take his business, he will take care of all of your business. Seek ye first the kingdom of God oh, and all his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. Yes, it is. And that's a great way to end uh this interview i am so glad that you were here to were able to share and to pour into the people today and i know no matter what they're struggling with whether it's health issues whether it's home whether it's business right somebody was able to get something from this episode so thank you so much and before you leave i want to um invite you to share with people how they can uh, connect with you how can they reach you on social media and all the things sure i'm having we uh i have a facebook community it's uh, almost 1400 little over 1400 um uh aspiring christian authors inside the community aspiring and emerging um entrepreneurs i'm gonna call them because we're doing a little bit of pivoting inside um the group, but you can go to www.aspiringchristianauthors.com and join my community. And 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 it's called now um, Amazon 2K Journal Coin Blueprint Business Blueprint. I am. It's it's an amazing community of of authors um, that I am teaching how to generate 2K 2000 in passive income a month. Mm -hmm. I have a business strategy. Um, you know it. You participated in it. A business strategy that will help you get to um, and and passive, very passive, two thousand dollars a month. It's doable. And, um, I'm about kingdom contributions. As I said, I want to make money. Uh, one of the things that I desire to do is to make major kingdom contributions. Wow. That is so great. Thank you so again so much for being here. And uh, you, you impact a whole lot. But I know that, you know, if the people want you to come back, I might want need you to come back and, and elaborate on even more because that I think we just scratched the surface of, uh, you know, your story. We just really scratched the surface, we right? But yeah. you are such a powerhouse and an encouragement to so many people. And thank you so much. Thank you. Again. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. All right, y'all. So thank you again for this episode of Restore My Soul podcast. I uh, hope and I pray that you were blessed by today and uh, Reverend Rita Henderson's testimony. Uh, make sure that you continue to follow me on all social media at Princess Millens and my website at princessmillens.com. You all remember that grief is a journey, but you don't have to walk it alone. And I pray that I see you in the next episode. Have a great day. Thank you for joining another episode of Restore My Soul podcast. 
Be sure to listen and watch each week as we continue the conversation on how to bounce back from the setback of grief and loss and to become resilient so that you too can thrive in life. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any new episodes and share this with as many people as possible so they can be encouraged in their emotional wellness journey. We invite you to follow Princess Millens on all social media platforms and on the website at princessmillens.com. Thank you for listening and we'll see you in the next episode of the Restore My Soul podcast.